Hello and welcome back to the Django ORM series. This is part eight. So in this tutorial, we're gonna have a look at performing custom SQL queries directly. In the previous tutorial, we looked at utilizing raw SQL queries. So you can use the raw manager to perform raw queries and return model instances. So if you're interested in that, then head back to the previous tutorial. Now, so this tutorial is focused on avoiding the model layer entirely and just executing custom SQL directly. So the process of actually doing this is fairly straightforward. What we first need to do is bring in the Django DB connection, and this essentially represents the default database connection. So we're gonna need this connection to send our SQL queries to the database. So next up, if we want to use the database connection, we need to call the connection.cursor. This will allow us to use the cursor object. So now what we can do is go ahead and execute some SQL. So here would be our SQL, for example. Uh, so we utilize the cursor to execute our SQL. And then the final step, well, the final step is simply just to output the data. So here we've got two tools, fetch one to select one item or return one item, or the fetch all to return all the items based upon the SQL query. So let's head over to the code and see this in action. So I'll give you a some simple example or a simple example showing you how to perform this type of task. We are just using exactly the same table as we were before, a very simple data set here. Uh, so this is the student table. You can go ahead if you're not seeing this data or this setup before, head a look in the models, you'll find the, the different databases that, or tables, sorry, that we're utilizing. So let's go ahead now and build this. So what we first of all need to do is just make sure that we're bringing in the connection. So go ahead to the top here. So I'm bringing in the, from the DB import connection. So make sure you've got that on board before you start this. And then we can start. So like I said, first of all, we need the cursor. So let's go ahead and get the cursor. This is gonna allow us to perform or execute our SQL statements. So from, so I was looking at four screens here, uh, cursor, uh, connection, sorry, dot, and then bring in the cursor. Okay, and then now what we need to do is execute some SQL. So we're gonna use the cursor to do that. And then we can, we use the command execute. And next up, we then run our SQL query. So let's just count how many rows there are, first of all, in our database. We know that there's four rows. So, oh, three, sorry. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. So let's just run some uh, SQL here. So select and then count. What do we want to count? Well, we want to count everything. So count all. Uh, from, and then it's the name of the app, which is student, and then the table, which is student. Okay, so let's run that SQL. So what we need to do now is return some data. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. So R equals, and then cursor dot, and here we're going to utilize Going back to the presentation, like I said, there was two options here. We've got the fetch one or fetch all. So in this case, we're gonna use fetch one because we've only should be returning one piece of data, which is the result of the calculation that's been made, how many rows we have available. So let's go back in. So we'll utilize that, so fetch one. And now what we can do is we'll just print this out. So let's just print this out. And uh, we wanna print out R. Okay, and then we can also obviously render that to the to the template. So we've got a template here of output. So we can just render that out. So let's just render out as R. So we'll pass the data as R. And then we'll just go into the templates, just make sure that's set up. So that's fetch data. So we're just gonna output it there. So let's just comment this out. Okay. So let's have a look to see if this works. Let's go back into our browser. Natural fact to get this to print out, let's just bring in the this here, this function. So it calls a function. 
So let's just bring in this function. So that we can utilize it with our outputs. So we're going to call this and hopefully then that gets returned. So let's just go back and refresh. And there we go. We have three items in the database. So that clearly is working. Now let's just go ahead. If you remember previously, we were utilizing the connection.queries, which was showing the SQL and the execution time, for example, the performance of our SQL. So let's just run this again. If you've come into this series a bit later and you're wondering, well, why am I refreshing when I'm using the shell? Of course, you can use the shell to run these commands. I just wanted to set this up this way. It makes it a little bit more visual. So you can see here, we've run the command and you can see the SQL here. It's exactly the same as what we've written. So select count from, sorry, select count all from student student table. And we've got the time, the performance execution time, which is obviously zero, 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 because probably we're utilizing this on our local machine and there isn't too much data in the database. So it's not taking too much time. And there we have it. So that was running a an SQL statement. This is completely bypassing the ORM and we're performing SQL natively. So at this point, it's just learning SQL, I guess. Um, so let's just go ahead and select, let's just select all from student. Uh, let's see if we can do this. So in this case, we're not gonna fetch one remember so this is going to be fetch all so we're going to use fetch all in this case so let's do that and let's just see if we can print everything out so we put that into r and then we output it or return it as r so let's go into here and use our loop again to output the data so it's returned as data r into data yep okay so i'll save that so let's go back into our templates and there we go. So we can see the data has been returned. Now this is where it gets a little bit more interesting because I've added a line break here or line across the page. So you can see the data that gets returned and also the loop. Now notice that the data gets returned in this format here and we loop through and we don't actually loop through any data. So looking at this data here, you can see that this is returning the data without their field names. So we've just got the data, there's no field names here, which means that we end up here with a list of values. So that's what's actually getting returned from the database, in this case, a list of values. So if we wanted to utilize this data in a more useful way, we probably need to return this as a, an object or a dictionary, for example. Of course, Django provides, and again, we can go into the manual and have a look at how we can then translate that data into a dictionary, for example, then we can utilize it as per normal in our application. So as it suggests here, there is a small performance and memory cost for doing this. So let's just go ahead and add this in. So this is going to be a very simple function that's going to take the data and turn it into a dictionary. So I've already added this in. So it's right here. So let's just hook this up. So what we're going to do is we're going to, like previously, we uh, perform this all select all statement from the students table to output or return the three students are inside of this table. So let's go ahead now and actually then call this new function. So this function is called ditch, dick fetch all, dictionary fetch all. Um, you can see it takes in cursor. So let's go ahead and run this and we're going to return that as R. So, and then you can see that we're going to then send that across to our template, the data that's returned in this new format. So we are returning data from a database. Uh, we are then going to format it into a dictionary and then put it into this variable and then send it across to our template. Okay, so when we output that out, uh, you can see we now have the loop working and it loops through all the data and returns it as per normal. And you can see here that we now have um, the actual return from the database. It's been formatted into a dictionary here. So you can see we've got IDs, first names, etc. for each item in the table. Okay, so there we go. That's a, a crude and simple way of working with SQL to completely bypass the ORM in Django. So if you weren't too sure at this point, we can do away with all these. So starts with is start with, ends with, and range and year and month, all these different functions we have in Django. 
ORM. We can get away and do away with those. And now what we're doing really is just performing SQL. So at this point, your familiarity, familiarity, familiar, familiarity, <laughs> oh God, familiarity of utilizing SQL comes in handy. So at this point, everything you've learned about the ORM, if you've learned all these different functions here uh, to perform different queries, well, that can be now removed because you are now just performing SQL queries. So you can perform that now within the query. So let's just go ahead and extend this. So where, let's create a where, and then age is uh, more than 20. So let's just see what gets returned here. There we go. So there's only one student with the age, her age is over 50, uh, 20, sorry. Um, so we can confirm that in our database. So there's just one student here. So that's why we ret return one data. So here now we can utilize our conditional statements here with inside our query as per normal. So now you have the power to utilize your existing skills, if you already know SQL, to completely bypass the Django ORM and just continue using SQL. So there may be some performance that you need to check um, utilizing SQL, uh, like you've seen translating it into a, a library, for example, here in this case. Of course, there's some more advanced features that we can discuss, but this is meant to be just a, a quick get started utilizing SQL and bypassing the ORM. So hopefully you appreciate that and you've learned something from this tutorial. But again, I thank you for listening and following these tutorials. Um, we have now at a very basic level, I think, covered how to perform custom SQL queries directly within Django.